everyone, it's Shari here today and we're going to be making this desktop calendar. This is the one that I made when we did our SRM sticker project on the Lawn Fawn blog. This one is a little more in depth as each month has a little scene on it and I use the stickers for my calendar. The stickers actually come on a clear sheet like this and I mounted each one on a piece yeah. of white cardstock. So this project can be done using stickers to make it a lot easier. Um, or the one that we're making today, I actually drew out the calendar, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm just going to quickly flip through this one so you can remember what we did or what I did before. Um, I put little tabs on each of these, which you can do if you want, but you don't have to. It was just a little added extra piece. And then each month is different. In the calendar we're going to make today, I'm going to make each page the same, just for simplicity purposes. So as you can see, the calendar can be as complex or as simple as you like. I used a lot of distress inks on these backgrounds and found some great color combinations I will share with you in the future. But the base was the one I had a lot of questions on. It's just a simple sort of tent-like structure made out of some chipboard. So I will show you how to do that towards the end of this video as well. So for my calendar, I actually drew my calendar out on a piece of graph paper. And I just hand drew this and scanned it in my computer and put it in Photoshop and actually I shrunk it down slightly to make a sheet of six calendars and then I just trimmed the calendars out with my paper trimmer using the wire guide as a guide for the edge. I'm going to be using the nonfiction 12 by 12 sheet as my background and I have picked out this Aquamist cardstock from Paper Tray Ink to use for my pages because it matches that light book in the background. And each of these pieces are cut at four and a quarter tall by three and three quarters wide. On my other calendar, they're actually four and a quarter square. But for this one, since I have the busy background, I want my actual calendar pages to be a little smaller so we can see more of the background. So I trimmed it down a little bit. So here I'm just cutting the cardstock straight down the center so it's four and a quarter tall and then I'm going to trim it to three and three quarters wide. So I have all my pages trimmed out and all my calendars trimmed out. And now I'm going to decorate my pages using a background stamp and some shadow ink from Hero Arts in the Tide Pool color. It makes a nice tone on tone background. You could also do this with patterned paper to save yourself some time as well. There is a patterned paper in the Dewey Decimal line that has this pattern on it, but I wanted my pattern on a diagonal, and so that's why I'm choosing to stamp it with the interlocking backdrops in the herringbone pattern. So you can see I'm just mounting this on my stamp press. Actually, I didn't quite get it straight, so you'll see me mount it again. So now that I have that on there, it's going to make stamping pretty easy and quick. So what I'm going to do is line up each calendar page. There was my sample piece to see how the color looks on the background. <laughs> I'm lining up each page with the grid on my cutting mat. And then I'm just going to ink up this background stamp. See me lining it up and then stamping at an angle. You really only have to line it up the first time because then you can go off the stamp every other time. And I changed the angle to not be quite at a 45 so that I didn't have to line my stamp up end to end across my page. So now I'll use what I already stamped as my guide for my next stamped image. And I realized when I started my second one that to keep my angle on the same angle, 
I needed some sort of guide. So I actually took one I had already stamped and put down a piece of washi tape at that angle. So now every time all I have to do is line up my piece of paper with my grid and then I know that this washi tape is the angle of that I want for my herringbone pattern. So I can just line up my stamp with that piece of tape for the first stamp image. And then after that I can use my stamped image as a guide and then you don't have to worry about your paper moving around. So I have all my pieces stamped here. 12 sheets of paper. And some of them have, you know, you could maybe turn it if you wanted to. Mine all go the same way. And of course, if you had pattern paper, you could change it up and make them all different. <laughs> so I'm going to set those aside. And now I'm going to work on my calendars. Once again, these are all blank because I drew them out. If you have stickers, this would go a lot faster because all the words are already on there for you. I stamped out on a scrap piece of paper. Um, the top is Claire's ABCs, then Smitty's and then Jessie's ABCs. And this was just to see what kind of style I wanted for my calendar. And I chose to go with Jessie's because I don't use Jessie's very often, so it needed to have a little love on this calendar. And it looks kind of hand-drawn, so it gives it a more custom feel to it. So I have the word September put out on my block in Jessie's ABCs, and I'm just going to stamp it in memento black ink in that top area of my calendar. Again, you could use the stickers to make this faster. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of stamping with the letters, or the numbers, excuse me, in the calendar. You could also find a calendar on Google or on the internet somewhere and just cut that up because really the most interesting part is what you do around the calendar. So I have all my months stamped out. You could also use the months that are in stage East too, but for my calendar, they're kind of small so I did not use those. But I am going to use the numbers in Say Cheese too because the Jessie's numbers are a little too big for my squares here. And I am actually going to use the sticker sheet from SRM stickers as a go-by because I'm prone to messing things up and I probably will actually. So I've laid all my months out and the way I'm going to do this to kind of make myself more efficient is to stamp all the ones first and then stamp all the twos and then the threes. That way I'm not changing my stamp off my block as much and hopefully I won't mess up as often. So now that I have them all stamped out I'm going to punch holes in my calendar pages and I've just laid this calendar on the background and I'm using my Tim Holtz ruler to center where those holes are going to be. And I'm just marking them with a pencil. And I'm going to use my crocodile because I can punch multiple pieces of this cardstock at once. And I used it on the 1 8 inch hole setting. You will see me change my setting there. And then I'll just line up the hole with my pencil mark. And punch through all of them. Now that I have them all punched, I'm going to adhere my months to my pages just using a glue runner from Scrapbook Adhesives. I just do this to every page. So I have all my pages here and actually when I was stamping I messed up March and I messed up December so they're blank right now. I'm going to go back and fix those later, reprint some calendar bases and do those again because they were just too messy. So now I'm using some very thin cardstock that I got at Michael's. It came in a 12 by 12 sheet and I this is the piece left over from my previous card base. So it's 12 inches long and it wasn't quite 6 inches wide because the other card base was wider. It has a sticker that I can't seem to get off the back. So we're going to make sure that's on the inside. So I believe this is five and three quarters wide. You can make it as wide as you need. And I'm just lining it up with my paper trimmer right in the middle. So I'm going to make 
this score at six. I'm not cutting it. I'm barely going to run the blade across the top, just sort of scoring the top part of this cardstock so that I can get it to fold right in the center. And then I'm going to repeat this and I'm going to make a score line an inch and a quarter from the end on each side. And these measurements will all depend on the size base you're making. But you want to make sure you have enough at the bottom so that your calendar doesn't topple over once you get all those pages on them. <clears throat> so I'm just going to fold this. And I'm going to crease it really good using my bone folder. So my camera messed up and I missed this part, but what I did here was I cut my 12 by 12 sheet a piece to the size of the front of my calendar. I adhered it down using the adhesive and then I lined up my calendar page, which you'll see me do here. <laughs> there, I put it on there and decided where I wanted it, then I took my pencil and marked where the holes were, and then I used my crop -a dial to punch through both sides of the, the cardstock base at the same time so that the holes end up in the exact same position. And now that I've done that, I can put my adhesive on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to completely line these up. I'm just going to overlap them a little bit so that my base can be a little wider than an inch and a quarter. Actually, and I, and I didn't quite have it straight. So I'm going to pop it off and straighten it up. <clears throat> Because the wider your base, the more sturdy your, your calendar is going to be. And then all you have to do is take your hinged rings here and put them through the base. And then slide your calendar pages right on there. And just snap it closed. Our calendar is pretty basic right now. You can embellish this a little more. Like the calendar I did before, you could add the tabs to the side of the calendar pages, and or you could add the year to the side using Quinn's 123s. And you can see in my final project, I actually did that. I added some paper to the top, a ribbon, and the year. Thanks for watching. Bye.